The efficacy of CRT depends on placement of the left ventricular lead within the late activated area. Unfortunately, in many cases lead implantation can be difficult or optimal lead position not obtainable, which can result in lower responders rate. This is a 45-year-old female with dilated cardiomyopathy and New York Heart Association Class 3 heart failure. The echo shows a dilated cardiomyopathy with an ejection fraction of 34%, a left ventricular and diastolic diameter of 63 mm and no mitral regurgitation. The time delay between left and right ventricular rejection is 73 milliseconds, with an impaired diastolic flow, supporting the need for CRT. The standard deviation of the time to peak systolic velocity is 48.8 and an index of BAX of 80 milliseconds, indicating an overall marked systolic dyssynchrony. The implantation is starting. This is our EP lab and this is the operating control room next to it. We insert a combined pressure conductor scatheter in the femoral artery, which is then pushed retrogradely to reach the left ventricle. When passing the aortic valve, care needs to be taken to avoid potential valvular damage by creating a U-shaped curve just above the valve. PV loop allows us to evaluate load-independent contractile state indices. Seven segmental volume slices perpendicular to the left ventricle long axis are shown. In the top left panel, segmental volumes are represented. The bottom left panel shows a volume curve, a pressure curve and the ECG recording. On the right panels you can see the contour representing the volume variation of the five segments and the PV loop at the bottom. This allows to have a beat to beat variation of the values and to reconstruct the PV loop in real time. The total volume is calculated as the sum of segmental volumes. This is the baseline PV loop, showing the synchrony of all segments on the left and impaired left ventricular systolic and diastolic function on the right. On the bottom right you can see B2 beat PV loop variations.